my time in Malta has come to an end. However, my digital nomad journey is just beginning. And in this video, I'm gonna talk and reflect on all of the different experiences and thoughts that I have about living and working from Malta. And I'm also gonna talk about where I'm heading next and what is my plans for the digital nomad journey. So if you wanna stick around for that, definitely do so. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button below and let's get started. So I think just starting off here, reflecting on my experience in Malta, I flipping loved it. Like I think Malta is one of those places that I would definitely go back again. Like my friend Alex, his parents have a house in Gozo and they've been to Malta and Gozo like many, many times over the years. And you know what, I can completely understand why. If I just reflect on some of the experiences and activities that I did when I was in Malta, like the sunset horse ride like by the beach was such a tranquil, really, really reflective experience for me. And I kind of felt like at one with myself and at peace and also like quite a reflective moment for me. I think that was like a really, really interesting part of the trip. Um, even just as simply as like being able to go and work by the pool and just chill and completely like a disconnect from the world and you know going to St Peter's Pool which is like a place where you can do like cliff jumping and like literally jumping off the edge of the pool and like having a three second drop down to the water was quite exhilarating. I think like yeah just reflecting on that and just some of the amazing food and amazing drink and places that we went to in like Valletta and like the whole Gozo day trip and Jeep trip. I just did like so many amazing things in the time that I was there. And I just think like, yeah, I, I didn't necessarily want to leave to be honest. Like I didn't think there was anything bad about the experience in Malta. One part was just you know, things were a little bit more expensive, but I don't necessarily see that as like a hugely negative thing. Like it's an island fundamentally. And I think if I just think about the location and where I was and how easy it was to just get, you know, jump in the sea or go for a swim in the pool or go to the shopping center, or walk down to the town. I think where I live on the farm at home, like it's definitely a little bit more <laughs> difficult to be able to do something like that. And also there was a gym like five minutes away from where I was. So it definitely meant I was able to kind of keep fit and also exercise and swim and you know be able to do everything that I wanted to do in such a really convenient place I think that massively made a difference and I think yeah like going into that trip and going to Malta whilst I didn't necessarily do as much kind of like co-living or co-working because most of the work I did was kind of like either in the apartment or like the areas kind of around the apartment I didn't like network as much with people However, I think I don't necessarily felt that I was disadvantaged by not doing that. Like I think if I was to stay there longer, and I definitely, you know, wish I kind of stayed longer in Malta, um, I would probably try and do something like that. Like I would probably join some co-working space or co-living or, or something like that, um, just to basically meet more people who were there, who were also trying digital nomad life in Malta and just to get to know people a little bit more from that area. So yeah, why am I, why am I moving on? Why am I, why am I leaving Malta? Well, basically the simple answer is I would have stayed longer, but two of my friends, Mike and Joe, are actually gonna be in Lisbon from basically now until the end of the year, at least Mike is, and Joe is gonna be there for like a month. So when we were discussing about, oh, you know, I've decided to go and live in Malta for a bit. And then Joe was like, oh, do you know what? I'm thinking of going to Lisbon. He's also like very similar to me in the sense of he was in the UK and kind of was getting a bit like stuck doing the same kind of routine over and over again and just wanted a bit of a change. And he has his own business. So he has the ability to be able to work from anywhere. And he was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm gonna be in Lisbon between these kind of two dates. What are you thinking? And then when there was the opportunity to share the cost of having an apartment between the two of us, it just made a lot of sense. And I also think that Lisbon's a pretty interesting place. We were able to get a really awesome like co-working space as well. And yeah, it just kind of made sense really. And so I basically decided, you know what? I'm just gonna book a flight from Malta direct to Lisbon. No necessary need for me to go back to London or the UK yet. And that's, kind of what I decided to do really. 
If I reflect specifically on what it's like being a digital nomad so far in this kind of journey that I'm going on, I think, yeah, like it's been pretty good, I would say. I was kind of worried whether I'd be super productive or not as productive, basically being in a new location and wanting to, you know, seal everything that has to offer in that in that specific place. But you know what? It's been pretty good. I think the work-life balance has been pretty solid. I've reduced some commitments that I was doing outside of the kind of like core functionality of work. I've had some Google wellness days. I've taken some holiday, which has allowed me to do certain things here. And, you know, Wi-Fi connection has been solid. The social life has been pretty solid. And I think actually that's the one point that it seems that digital nomads seem to face as the worst point in terms of the loneliness. Because I've known that people are gonna be in the places that I'm in, and particularly in Lisbon, where I'm gonna be in like a co-working space and working there, I think I will hopefully circumvent that main problem of being a digital nomad. And I think, yeah, am I missing the UK? Seeing some of the headlines about like petrol shortages and uh, things like that? Then, yeah, yeah, I'm not missing the UK so much. And, uh, the end of the day look i'm even building up a bit of a tan already so we'll be getting that in the uk right now uh so yeah in no major rush to come home obviously it'll be nice to see friends and family in the uk but in due course so yeah i've decided that i'm going to move from malta to lisbon for a bit and work there for an undefined period of time not exactly sure when i'm going to go back to the uk but i think there's definitely a, an appeal for lisbon in the sense of there's quite a few people that i know that are living or working or digital nomading there at the moment. There also seems to be quite a tech hub in Lisbon. There's even like a Google office, which I'm gonna try and see if I can get into. And the weather actually looks really good for like, at least for the, the time that I'm gonna be there for, for definite. And you know, may even extend, let's see. So yeah, no major plans to come back to the UK anytime soon. Let's see. Obviously I can't be outside of the UK and the EU now for more than three months. But uh, yeah, let's let's see how we go. And yeah, I think, you know, in Lisbon, we've got the co-working space sorted, we've got the apartment sorted. So yeah, I think like reflecting on Lisbon as my next location from a digital nomad perspective, like internet connection, super strong, English speaking, like super, super easy, um, even though that's a bit lazy from my point of view. Obviously the social scene is arguably even better in Lisbon than it is in Malta. And I know people in Lisbon as well. Like the actual setup that we've got here is gonna be really solid. So, you know, we've got like a co-working space we've already organized and the fact that there's the Google office that I may or may not be able to go to. And yeah, I think it should just be really good fun and the weather's gonna be hopefully really good. Do some cool experiences, do some cool like activities and things like that. There's already a few things on Airbnb experiences that look quite fun and interesting to do. And the fact that there's loads of people here already Sounds like a good idea to come and meet some people and catch up with, with folks that I've not seen in a while and just, yeah, hang out for at least a few weeks and see how we go from there. So yeah, if you're interested in hearing more about what Lisbon's like to be as a digital nomad, some of the activities I get to, maybe even like a day in the life of a Google employee remotely, hit the subscribe button down below. And in this playlist here, I'll put this video and all future Lisbon digital nomad videos into as well. So if you're not already subscribed, otherwise have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.